In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to record ProRes RAW on this camera, the Sony FX30. Now, this is one of my favorite cameras. It is a great value camera that can record in 4K up to 120 frames per second, and it has a gorgeous 10-bit image. But if you want a little bit more out of the camera and you want the flexibility of a RAW workflow, you can hook it up to an Atomos device and record in ProRes RAW. This is gonna give you the ability to record 4K, like 4.7K up to 60 frames per second, but it's gonna give you 12-bit color instead of 10 bit color. And it's also gonna give you the ability to change your white balance and your ISO in post because those things aren't baked into the camera. It's something that you can change later on down the line. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up your menus and the monitor and as well as a couple of helpful shortcuts uh, to save you a little bit of time when you're switching back and forth. For those of you that are new around here, my name is Riley and I'm a documentary filmmaker who likes talking all things filmmaking and creativity. If you're someone who enjoys making documentaries or films with small crews, then you're in the right place. Consider subscribing and following along. All right, let's dive in. All right, so once you have the camera plugged into the monitor, you're gonna to wanna to go into the menu system and you're gonna to want to turn on your HDMI output setting to enable the raw recording. So you're gonna come down here to the setup menu and scroll almost all the way down to the bottom to external output. And from here, you're gonna go into the HDMI output settings. So this is where all of your raw controls are gonna happen. So you're obviously gonna to wanna to make sure that your raw output is set to on and not to off. This option here is to enable recording in camera. So then in order to change the frame rate, you're gonna to have to scroll down a little bit further and this raw output setting is where you're going to change your frame rate. So if you want to, for example, go from 24p to 60p, you're gonna do that in this menu uh, setting right here. It is not in the typical uh, option where if your raw output is set to off, normally you would change your frame rate right here in this kind of shortcut menu inside the FX30. This setting right here has no bearing on the raw frame rates. So you're gonna to want to go to uh, back into the uh, external output, HDMI output settings, and then with raw obviously set to on, you're gonna change your frame rate from here. You change your time code, whether or not you want that on or off. And then HDMI only can take two channels of audio. And so you have to, with the FX30, determine whether you want that to be channel one and two, which if you have the top handle is your XLRs or channel three and four, which is that uh, 3.5 millimeter mic jack. Now, since all of this happens in this menu tab that is pretty buried and hard to find, one helpful tip that I would recommend that I've done on my camera is to actually save this uh, setting shortcut in your My Menu tab. And so what I've done is I've added this right here. And so at the very top, I can access it and change my raw recording, change my frame rates uh, and go from there. In order to do this, you just scroll down to the My Menu setting, hit Add Item, and then you can select it right here and then you can change where you want that to be added on your My Menu page. Right now I have it at the top so I can access it a little bit quicker. The other thing to keep in mind is that your Atomos device is going to determine the maximum frame rate that you can record. The Ninja 5 and the Atomos Ninja that they just released are limited to the 30 frames per second setting because the FX30 actually records slightly higher resolution than the standard 4K. So you're gonna need the Ninja 5 Plus or the Ninja 5 Ultra, I believe, if you wanna record 4.7K at 60 frames per second. All right, now over on the Atomos device, you should be prompted with this little raw detection signal uh, and you can hit it and switch over to 
recording ProRes RAW and it should take care of most of the work for you. However, if you don't see this or you accidentally click decline, what you can do is go over to your codec settings and just enable the RAW tab here. And then you are pretty much good to go from here. The camera, the Atomos device does a good job of recognizing that it is a Sony camera and it even recognizes that it's the FX30. Now, one thing that I would recommend is to double check and make sure that your firmware on your Ninja device is up to date. I had an issue when I first bought my FX30 uh, the Ninja 5 was updated to do ProRes RAW, but only with the A7S and the FX3. Uh, so you will want to make sure that you don't have an older firmware uh, because a lot of the RAW controls and just um, some of the image quality stuff is not going to sync quite right. And so I had um, this issue where there was just a ton of noise in the RAW signal. And there is a little bit of extra noise in the RAW signal, but I mean a crazy amount of noise. Uh, and then when I went back and double checked the firmware and updated it, uh, the image was much more usable. And so from here, you should be good to go. One other small piece of advice for filming in RAW on this camera is to record at the base ISOs. If you stick to 800 and 2500, which is the low base ISO and the high base ISO, the sensor is gonna perform the best both in terms of noise quality, but also the dynamic range. And because this camera does have a, I would say a decently noisy sensor, sticking with those base ISOs is gonna give you the best performance. Now, the sensor does perform pretty well in low light, and especially if you're recording internally, the noise reduction that Sony has on this camera is actually quite good. But when you record in RAW, you bypass the noise reduction. And so sticking at those base ISOs is gonna ensure that you have the least amount of noise and the best image quality. You're just gonna have to make sure that the sensor has enough light and that you don't underexpose the image. And I think if you do that, you're gonna be really happy shooting RAW on this little camera. It's gonna give you a little bit of extra flexibility with that color depth and also going to give you the ability to change your white balance and ISO and post. All right, that is going to do it for this one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.